We are out here at Monument Lake again. We meant to go to Georgetown this morning, but we actually didn't make it just because the uh, wind said 35 mile an hour gusts, and that's no fun. So we're out here at Monument again. A couple people out here fishing. And we've just been set up here. How many do you think we've caught, babe? Seven? Yeah, seven or eight. Yeah. I, mean, I think I've caught probably at least five myself. So we caught about seven or eight. Uh, we're out here on the ice. We got George. Right here, Georgia. You have to introduce him to our And dog. our new puppy. And this is Nasher. Hi, Nasher. He's a good boy. The boy who just fell in the fish yeah, hole. Yeah, he just fell right in the hole. His back legs both went in. But he's so fat, there's no way he'd fall through that entire hole. Oh, God, no. So, uh, anyway, we're out here fishing, having a good time. We can't keep two rods in the water because the fish keep choking the bait. So we are just gonna jig with one rod and uh, see what happens. So that is the plan. Hope you guys enjoy. We're jigging uh, holes right next to each other. I have got a little uh, Wonder Bread jig on with a wax worm, and Michelle has a Chikai Fire Tiger jig on. She's got the sonar. I'm just kind of basing it off bottom. So if you don't have sonar, uh, you can get in like, you know, six feet of water. Uh, you can figure that out by drilling a bunch of holes and seeing how far your line goes down. And once you notice the line is stopped, you can close your bail and just give it a couple good reels down and hang it right off the bottom. Just hanging it right off bottom there. I'm getting bit. There we go. I got him this time. This tiny little guy. There we go. Boom. Why those spring bobbers are so crucial. You can't see the bite before they swallow it. So you use the spring bobber. You usually have a little better chance. Perfect. Oh, oh, he's fighting. He's a feisty guy. No, leave it. No, sir. Nice fish, Michelle. Thank you. Looking all the kisses. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Oh, you want to sniff? Yeah, you're not as into it, are you? <laughs> He's trying it again. Got him now. Got you now, sucker. Oh, babe, he's huge. Oh, damn, that's a good fish, Michelle. Babe, he's beautiful. Yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, look at his colors. I've got a really nice one here. The colors on this guy. Ooh, beauty. He's like really deep. He's very colored. deep, dark colored. Nice. Good fish. Thank Pull you. him back in the hole. Say goodbye, George. See you, bud. Dude, just barely moved it. Hit it again. Go ahead and use the deucer. 
Did I get you in the mouth finally? Yes, I did. Sweet. So they're on bottom right now. Drop it down. Yep. Suspect he'd hit you anytime soon. He's all over you right now. Okay, Nash. All right, I'll show you guys. The Vexlar here, or this is what a Vexlar normally is. Um, so right here is a flasher. I really like this unit. This is the first hook. Um, the second one's kind of a, a crappier unit for the four inch. Um, but this one has maps, it has color screen, and it's got split screen so you can do flasher. Oh my God, dog, stop. He's a thirsty guy. So you have a flasher and then you have a sonar. So the flasher is the same thing as the sonar. Uh, this over here is called the amplitude scope. So what we have is a six foot depth and we have it on high chirp right now. And this is the top and this is the bottom, just like a normal sonar. You can see this fish down here on the bottom. Yeah, go ahead. So Michelle's got a jig. She's going to put it down the hole and then we're going to watch her jig fall. So right now the jig's in the three foot range. Now she's in almost four foot and you can see that traced on the sonar here. And now you got another fish that's staring at her right now and she could potentially get bit. So let's watch her bobber here really quick. Oh, you can't really see her bobber. We'll tell you when she gets bit. But this is a fish just all over her jig right now. She's about four feet and he's looking at it and he's thinking he wants to take it. You can also see that replicated here. Her jig is right here at five feet and now there's nothing around it, nothing going on. Uh, but there's a fish on bottom. So we'll have her drop down a little bit further. And now she's about five and a half feet. She needs another half an inch or half a foot. So you just pull out a little bit. of. And now she's on bottom. And now that fish on bottom is looking right at her. And you can tell because it's a big red mark. And she'll probably get bit here really soon. Because that fish is all over her jig right now. Just checking it out. He's not moving out of the screen. Which means that he's looking at it. And you can see all the activity up here on the flasher. That's her jig, and the red is the fish looking at it, and right now he's biting it. Got it. And there she goes, and she just caught it, and he's coming up the hole. Oh, he just spit it. Oh, he spit it. Okay. So that's how you use of a flasher uh, to see what's going on. You can see she pulled the transducer out here, and now she just dropped the transducer back in. I think that about wraps it up for the day. Uh, we had a good day out here. We caught more than 40, 50 fish, uh, bluegill, and trout. So we're going to head home. It's about 11 o'clock. Had a great day though. Most fish were caught in five feet of water with uh, little tiny jigs and wax worms. So hopefully you guys can get out and do some fishing too. And we'll see you next time on CO Fish Bro.